A Farewell to Arms, a beautifully told story by Ernest Hemingway. And this is what we shall discuss today in American literature, last novel from Amer American literature, okay? Because from Monday, we are starting with African literature. A Farewell to Arms, Arms, you know, Arms. Published in the year 1929 by Ernest Hemingway who lived from 1899 to 1961. The genre of A Farewell to Arms is realism. It depicts the reality and not fantasy of life, how everyone has to be real and face the casualties of life. And of course, it is a war novel. It depicts World War I. Setting is Italy and Switzerland during World War I. The time span is 1916 to 1918, although the war went from 1914 to 1918, right? And the narrator is first person. The hero of the story is Frederick Henry. Remember his name, Frederick Henry. Of course, you will. The story will move around him. And this novel, A Farewell to Arms, is hailed as the premier American war novel from World War I. And remember, George Peel wrote a poem by the same name. Okay? Now, before we start the novel, I have to tell you the historical context to this novel. See, World War I was fought between Germany and Austria on one side, Great Britain, France, Russia, and United States on the other. There were total 20 million casualties in the war. 20 million people died during World War I. There was a battle during this war, which was in Italy. The name of this battle was Battle of Caporetto. Okay, Caporetto is a place in Italy. So in the Battle of Caporetto in 1917, Austro-Hungarian force, forces, with the help of Germany, they were able to break into the Italian front line by using poison gas, stormtroopers, infiltration tactics. Basically, Austria and Hungary, they became stronger in front of Italy, understood? And Austria and Hungary had the support of Germany, while Italy had the support of Britain, America, France, and Russia. Okay, now the historical event that will be discussed in this novel is the chaotically organized Italian army's retreat, the chaotically organized Italian army during this war, following this war, okay, the Battle of Caporetto. Now it will be easy when I will tell you things. The year of the novel is 1916. Lieutenant Frederick Henry is an American who has volunteered for the Italian Ambulance Corps before the United States joins the war. So Lieutenant Frederick Henry has joined Italian forces as a driver, as an ambulance driver. So he transports patients, he transports military goods, he transports people also, and he has few other drivers, you know, under him, and they work for the Italian ambulance corps. Basically, Frederick Henry, whom I will call Henry here, he's an American living in Italy. The Italian army is trying to hold off the forces of Austria and Germany from entering its mainland, as I told you. Now listen to Henry's line from the novel, whatever I have written in italics is from the novel, right? At the start of the winter came the permanent rain, and with the rain came the cholera. But it was checked, and in the end, only 7,000 died of it in the army. Can you imagine the harshness and the numbness of the war? So after cholera and the rain and the winter, when 7,000 people died in the Italian army, Henry says only 7,000 people died. That is what war does to you. Every person dead just becomes another number dead, right? The pace of the war decreases because of the winter. Winter, everything is cold, so the war's pace is decreasing. Therefore, Henry decides to go for a trip around Italy since he's from America and he wants to travel around Italy. In spring, he returns to the front where he meets a woman called Catherine Barclay. Remember Catherine because she's the heroine of this novel, okay? Catherine is an English nurse who is serving in Italy. Recently, she lost her fiancé in the Battle of the Somme. Therefore, she always carries his riding crop as a memory. Basically, riding crop is a whip, you know, used to control horses. So Catherine has lost her boyfriend in a war and she always carries his riding crop. She cannot get over her dead boyfriend, her dead fiancé. Another character, Rinaldi. 
Rinaldi is a surgeon, a ladies man. In fact, Henry is also a ladies man. Let me tell you, they have too much fun together during this wartime, visiting brothels, drinking heavily, etc, etc. So Rinaldi is a surgeon, a ladies man and Henry's best friend in the Italian army. Rinaldi's love interest lies in this, you know, British nurse called Catherine. But when Rinaldi finds that, you know, somewhat Henry, Henry and Catherine are getting interested in each other. So Henry and Catherine become involved in this elaborate game of seduction, okay? They are literally trying to woo each other. They, in fact, make love very soon in the novel for different reasons, definitely. But when Rinaldi finds that this is what is happening with his best friend, Henry, and the nurse, Catherine, so he backs away, he backs out. And this love affair, which is a fling, basically begins between who? Between Henry, the Lieutenant Frederick Henry, and be between the British nurse, Catherine Barclay. Easy, easy till here, yes? Now, the reasons that I told you why they are flirting with each other. Henry flirts because of lust for ad adventure as the war has left him detached. Whereas Catherine wants to fall in love instantly to escape the war as well as the memory of her dead fiance. For instance, listen to this conversation during their second rendezvous at Gorizia. What is Gorizia? Gorizia is a town in Italy. So Henry says, you don't have to pretend you love me. That's over for the evening. Is there anything you would like to talk about? Catherine says, but I do love you. Henry says, please, let's not lie when we don't have to. So here, Henry is that pragmatic man, a man of duty, honor. He is at the front. He wants to find, fight the war. He's just having a good time with Catherine. But Catherine is telling him, no, I love you. I do love you. And that is also very soon she's fallen in love with him. Why? as a source of escapism, as I told you. Now, what happens? During an encounter with the enemy, Henry is wounded in the knee. Listen to the brutality of war. Here, the theme of war is discussed. He actually touches his knee, okay, in the battlefield, and he utters, I knew that I was hit and leaned over and put my hand on my knee. My knee wasn't there. So his knee is dislocated. For treatment, he is sent to an American hospital in Milan, Italy, where a doctor named Dr. Valentini decides to operate on his knee immediately. And Henry is thrilled to see Catherine here. Can you imagine? Catherine is posted here at this American hospital in Milan, Italy, and they meet again. So before the surgery, as nurses always do that preoperative care of the patients, Catherine is preparing Henry for the same. So Catherine says, there, darling, now you're all clean inside and out. Tell me, how many people have you ever loved? She's asking, how many affairs you ever had? And Henry says, nobody. Here, the theme of truth versus lie is discussed because we know that Henry is definitely lying and we want to know how this lie will move ahead in, you know, their love life, right? The surgery is happening. The knee surgery of Henry goes smoothly and he begins with his recovery under the beautiful care of Catherine. Okay, Catherine sits with him, talks to him, reads for him. They have love affair. The coming months change their lives. This once upon a time fling and flirtation changes into a powerful love affair. Yes, the love becomes true. The love becomes religious. For Catherine, it becomes religious because at one point in the novel, she tells Henry that you are my religion. Whereas, let me tell you, Henry is not a religious person. You know, there's a time when the priest asks Henry, do you believe in God? He says, no, maybe I'm just afraid of him. I don't know. Okay, so he's not completely a follower of religion. Now, once when it is raining heavily, you know, in the hospital, so Catherine comments, not inside the hospital. I mean, it is raining heavily when Catherine and Henry are in the hospital. Catherine comments, I'm afraid of the rain because sometimes I see me dead in it. Is it foreshadowing something? It is raining and Catherine is saying, I see me dead in the rain. Henry heals gradually from his surgery, later from jaundice and is ordered to resume his duty. Meanwhile, Catherine reveals to Henry that she is pregnant with their baby. The two say goodbye with mutual devotion and they hope to see each other soon. 
After this, Henry travels to the front where chaos is happening. Italian forces are turning chaotic. They lack good leadership. They lack strategy. Many Italians are dying. Austro-Hungarian forces are entering the country with the help of strong German leadership, as I told you in, at the start, the historical context of the novel. And at this time, the Italians and their allied forces prepare to retreat, which means move back. They are not able to face this Austro-Hungarian force, so they decide to move back. Henry leads his team of ambulance drivers. Who are the drivers under him? Gordini, Passini, Manera, Gavozzi. They, you know, so Henry leads them into the great column of evacuating troops. They are also evacuating, they are retreating. And at this time, they shot you know, they shoot down an engineering sergeant. Here the chaos is showcased, okay? These people are drivers. They are not army men, but they shot somebody. When their ambulance bogs down in the mud and it cannot move any further, they continue on foot towards the town of Udini in Italy. And as they march, one of the drivers is shot dead by an easily frightened guard of the Italian army who thinks of Henry and drivers as enemies. Nobody knows who is enemy, who is friend. There's so much chaos at the Italian front. Italians are killing their own allies. You know, this guard is killing his own ally. The driver is an ally of the Italian. He's a friend of the Italian, right? Henry hides himself. The other drivers hide themselves. And chaos continues the next day. How? Italian soldiers kill their own commanding forces out of rage and anger. The battle police, who is killing people at sight and with ease, seizes Henry. They want to question Henry. Who are you? Are you at our side or at enemy's side? And they know, you know, somewhere Henry knows that they will shoot me also. They will not even listen to me. So Henry manages to jump and dive into the river. And from there, he's able to board a train for Milan, Italy. How? You know, in the train, he hides himself beneath an artillery cover. And here is where he makes a decision. What decision does Henry make? He's sure that his obligations to the war effort are over. And he dreams to return to Catherine. Yes. Here, do you understand? Henry is shown as a round character, not as a flat character. During the course of the novel, he changes his values, his psychology changes. Okay, he's evolving through the course of the novel, which makes Henry a round character, right? Now, in Milan, Henry visits his friend Simons, who provides him with civilian clothes. He dresses into those clothes, boards a train to the town of Stressa in Italy. And on the train, when he finds a newspaper, he says to himself, Self. I had the paper, but I did not read it because I did not want to read about the war. I was going to forget the war. I had made a separate piece. What separate piece is he talking about? The separate piece that he wants to leave a, live a peaceful life with Catherine and their baby. Now, location is Tresa in Italy. Henry reunites with Catherine. The two feel peaceful in each other's arms. From there, they escape in a tiny boat to Switzerland. Here, they settle happily in Montreux, which is an alpine town in Italy. Sorry, in Switzerland. It is a beautiful alpine town in Switzerland, Montreux. So Catherine and Henry settle here. They decide to forget about the war. Although, of course, Henry feels guilty now and then of abandoning his men at the front there, okay? The spring arrives, Henry and Catherine shift from Montreux to a hotel at Lausanne to be closer to the hospital. See, it is World War I. Hospitals were not at every nook and corner, okay? So they had to be closer to the hospital for the delivery to happen smoothly. So they shifted to a hotel at Lausanne. Henry said, we knew the baby was very close now and it gave us both a feeling as though something were hurrying us and we could not lose any time together. Oh, they felt so close together. They were like, we have to spend this time together when, you know, before the baby comes. Soon Catherine goes into labor unexpectedly. Listen to the climax of the story. The delivery turns complicated. Catherine deli delivers a stillborn baby boy, which means a dead baby boy. The story does not end here. The boy is dead. The baby is dead be before even, you know, getting birth. Her pain continues as her health deteriorates due to hemorrhage, overflow of blood. And when the nurse is unsure whether Catherine will survive, Henry cries, quote, 
God, please make her not die. I will do anything you say if you don't let her die. You took the baby, but don't let her die. That was all right, but don't let her die. Please, please, dear God, don't let her die. Soon, Catherine passes away. She's dead. Here, the theme of love and loss, as you can see, and religion. Henry was not a religious person. At this time, he's only saying, God, save Catherine, save Catherine. You took the baby from us. It's okay, but save Catherine. But she's dead. And this takes us to the last lines from A Farewell to Arms. Goat, listen to these lines. But after I had got them out and shut the door and turned off the lights, it wasn't any good. It was like saying goodbye to a statue. After a while, I went out and left the hospital and walked back to the hotel in the rain. The rain comes again. Remember, Catherine had said once in the rain, I feel that I'm dead in the rain. And it's literally raining. Catherine is dead. And Henry thinks that he just said goodbye to statue because Catherine is not moving. The baby is not moving. They are as good as statues. And we are done with a farewell to arms. I hope you loved it. And it is a tragedy and it is a novel worth reading. Yes, if you have time, do read it. This is Hina from Team Walla. Take very good care of yourself. Bye-bye.